Uh, quorum being present, we have to discuss the September 13th, 2021 CPA committee meeting. Um, I got uh, on the <clears throat> simple agenda that due to Amy, she, she did a wonderful job and I got to give her a lot of credit. We have a, an agenda. So we don't have the minutes from the previous meetings and to a vote. So I know that there are a lot of people waiting and I would like to have a quick treasurer's report that shows that we do have money available and uh, how much is in the set asides and outstanding and stuff. So without further ado, I recognize Mary Thayer. Oh, you're muted. There you go. I'm going to share my screen if I can. Um, yeah. Move it over. Share screen. Hey, all right. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Where did it go? Here it is. Does everyone see this? Yep. Okay. So right now, as of today, um, this is what we have in the set asides, the open space. This is, we put in 45,000 in each of the set asides at the annual town meeting. And then we also had projects coming out of them. So this is the balance after that. Um, the open space set aside is 124,880. There's we spent everything in the historical set aside. The housing set aside is 308, 339. We hey Mary, saved Mary, the, the screen that you're sharing, just so you know, it's only your email. It's not any of the things that you're saying. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Thank you. Is that better? No. No. Nope. Stop share. You don't need to see all my email. Let me um, <laughs> try this again. No. Oh. Does that look there better? Does... That's a CPA fund summary. Yep. All right, I'll try again. It's so open space, 124,880. Housing set aside is 308, 339. We keep 500,000 of the general fund in the reserve. So the general fund available balance is 1,328,329. Um, <clears throat> subtotal of the funds available is 2,261. We have committed 579,167 that have been voted on at previous town meetings. So the actual fund CPA fund balance is 2,840,716. Um, this is where the funds come from. This was as of the last year. Um, we have tax liens and interest and penalty. The bulk of it is the surcharge and the real estate taxes, and then also the state distribution. And please just see how high the state distribution was for um, this previous past year. It's based a lot on real estate sales, housing mm -hmm. tax stamps, and there was a lot of elevated prices and a lot of sales that went on. So they had a lot of funds and they said November's supposed to be quite high also. The one we get for um, fiscal year 2022. <clears throat> so we got 489,000 input into the um, fund, the CPA fund for Hadley which again is the largest we've had in the last five years. Um, and then we had set aside 45,000. These, the, these are the projects that have been approved and haven't been done yet. Um, this is the current balance. Some of them have had funds taken out as the work has progressed. Um, there's none that are specifically up, have to be used by this fall town meeting. So we don't have any that way. I did highlight a few because we had asked that these go away because they're just, they should have already been written off, but um, they haven't been yet. So we'll 
we'll see in the next two weeks if we can figure out from the town treasurer how to or town accountant how to do that. The historic maps, I think this is left over, but it'll automatically go away next June. So we don't really need to do much with that unless Alan knows if, you know, there's of the money spent, there was 760 left over um, or that hasn't been spent, I should say. Oh, okay. Um, and then this is the, what was completed last year, especially was the Nibala APR. Um, and then this is what's been proposed tonight. So we've got the, right. the different applications that we have that we'll go over, have to figure out which fund to take them from. Um, so that's, that's my report. Any questions on that? No, I think you did a wonderful job and I appreciate all the effort that you put into it as a very concise estimate of how, how much we have to spend. Thank you. Um, okay, do we, um, we don't need a vote on the <sighs> report, do we? What do you think, Amy? No. I had forgotten that we had used up all the historic. Yeah, we used up a lot of it. Was that on Allen and the uh, cemetery efforts? It was. Pretty much. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Oh, and I the know. extra came out of the general fund because we didn't have enough in the historic. Right. Right. You should be getting some of that back uh, this fall, though. You promise? Yep. <laughs> Good. I hope so. Do, do you know approximately how much? Uh, we haven't got the final bills yet, but it's probably between ten and 20000 Oh, wow. Good. Thank you. I appreciate your, uh, your candor. Um, okay. Uh, any questions to the treasurer about the treasurer's report? Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Um, I'm going to, are you ready for the minutes of the previous meeting, Mark, or not? I don't have it. I can't just, I don't. Okay. My computer got rebuilt and I don't have any Word or Excel on it yet. So I can't open anything. I'm, I'm kind of dead in the water. Uh oh. Are you Sorry. able to record what happens tonight? I will. I'll, I'll take hand notes. Ooh, all right. You're good. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, hey, bud, do I X this out? Okay. Um, okay. We, we do have some housekeeping duties to attend to, but first, we would like to, because I don't think everybody needs to attend our housekeeping duties. You're more than welcome to, but um, we do have some requests for funding. And if it's okay with the rest of the committee, we will go right to those requests for funding. Then we will jump back to the housekeeping articles. Is that okay with everybody else? Yes. Okay, Denise. Hi, Cassandra. Hi. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I've just left the hospital, but I'm I'm here for the meeting. I just can't turn on my camera. Well, oh, good. How's your, how's your dad doing? Oh, he's been in ICU two weeks tomorrow, so he's oh, not doing I'm sorry great. To hear that. Thank you very much. It's been quite quite a two weeks. Yeah, well, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Molly, are you ready? Uh, sure. I am. Okay, you have a funding request. <laughs> for request to transfer housing allocation of CPA funds to affordable housing trust. You have the floor, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thanks Edwin. Um, and I believe Bill Dwyer is on here as well and we may find uh, he's able to answer some questions that may come up. 
But yes. just by way of background, um, I'm here representing the Housing and Economic Development Committee. And something we became aware of, I believe, when we were researching um, the COVID relief package, uh, we found out that in some communities within the Commonwealth, that they have decided to merge um, where they had both a CPA pool of funds along with an affordable housing trust, that they transferred funds from the CPA, the housing only portion of the CPA pool over to the purview, if you will, of the affordable housing trust trustees. So the, the reason this is coming up at all, again, is we now, because of an act of a previous town meeting, have an affordable housing trust um, that was approved. And the trustees are currently the full planning board with representation as well from the select board. So um, first thing I wanna say is that this isn't coming up because there's a specific project or a grab for funds right now that people are looking at. It's really more, um, you know, came about as the idea about, gee, that's funny, why are these communities doing it? And then when we found out why, it made sense to us that it's something that Hadley should be talking about. So the primary driver behind it is that, you know, we're of the belief that it's a whole arena of affordable housing is a very specific we have to get area of expertise. Um, and the CPA committee already has a pretty wide breadth of knowledge that they need to span across, you know, so you're dealing with historic issues, you're dealing with, you know, making sure everything's in compliance with CPA funding requirements, et cetera. Um, and we have money in the affordable housing trust, which the only money that we have came from, if you recall, the East Street Commons project. So there's 300 and some odd thousand dollars there that the town is holding. And then we have a similar amount of money, 300 and whatever thousand that um, Mary just reported on, sitting as the apportionment of the CPA funds. So really the, the driver behind the conversation is more of one of positioning ourselves strategically. The thought is that the CPA committee has its own guidelines that need to be met. And the CPA committee meets only really a couple of times a year in advance of the town meeting and then a special town meeting. However, when you're dealing with real estate and grant monies, et cetera, that would fall under the arena of affordable housing issues, they tend to be pretty fluid and fast moving situations. So our committee talked about the merits of bringing together the CPA portion of funding for affordable housing, merging it with the current affordable housing trust and knowing that right now that would be under the purview of the planning board with representation from the select board, recognizing that the only group in town right now that's really expert in any way, and it's no offense to anybody, whether it's on our committee or your committee, but the, the planning board, because they know the zoning is really far more expert in affordable housing matters and how they relate to Hadley than any group. So our committee made the decision that we wanted to recommend that these funds be moved over. Um, we brought this to both the planning board and the select board in advance of coming to CPA. Uh, the select board unanimously agreed that it made sense in their minds. Um, and I believe uh, for all of you, I sent the uh, kind of pros and cons outline as part of your material. So I'm happy to walk through that, but I think you should have that in front of you. Um, that was really the material that we used to present to the select board. The planning board, um, you know, being fully transparent, it was a split vote. I believe the vote was three to two in favor. So the planning board also voted to move the funds over. Um, I think if I can characterize the two dissenting votes, 
Um, I know it was Joe Sagradnik, and I, I can't recall if it was uh, Jim or, or Mike, but one of them also voted against it because they didn't feel that there was a specific impetus behind it. So um, that's really the gist of it. I think, you know, the thought is that if the funds were moved, number one, it creates a larger pool. So we would have $600,000 um, sitting in that affordable housing trust to work with. And that makes it a little bit more meaningful right now in terms of the opportunities in front of us. You know, that, that again, there's nothing in front of us right now, but that might be in front of the town, um, whether that be at a land purchase um, for affordable housing, whether it be the expenditure for some sort of a grant or a study that might be needed to move a project along more quickly than our town meeting schedule would allow. So, you know, rest assured, it, it's, it's not intended to, um, how can I put it? it? You know, it's not intended to take away scrutiny. The scrutiny would still be there, but the scrutiny would be with a different group of individuals that currently are our elected planning board with feedback from the select board. So we believe that the oversight is still very appropriate for taxpayer dollars. Uh, not, you know, it's not gonna open it up to any sort of frivolous spending by any means, but they're the ones who are going to know where these projects related to affordable housing um, might lie in the timeline and what's necessary and all of that as opposed to asking the CPA committee to get your heads wrapped around all of that. And you're likely to have far more questions that might make that process a lot longer. So if we in fact wanna use those housing funds as intended, um, we feel that this might be a better avenue than leaving it where it is right now, where historically the CPA committee hasn't found any need to expend those funds. I think those are all my talking points right now, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the question arises: the first thing, won't we won't we be bypassing the taxpayers who have contributed all their hard-earned money towards the CPA fund by by reappropriating the funds? That's a good question, Edwin, and it's the first question that within the Housing and Economic Development Committee, we asked ourselves. And I think if the taxpayers understood, so well, first of all, I would say, no, um, you're, you're correct if you say you're bypassing town meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So in proposing what we're doing, town meeting approval would not be required. Right. However, but, however, what we're thinking is that we're also talking about only elected officials um, when the Affordable Housing Trust Committee is made up of elected officials. So the, the taxpayers or the voters at least have had their say there and who sits in those seats. And when you think about the whole point of having a housing set aside within the, within the CPA taxpayer dollars, it's a more expeditious way to put that money to use than we have been. So we, we believe that it, depending on how the CPA committee feels tonight, that by going to town meeting with this article, that the taxpayers indeed will have their say there as the final yay or nay on this issue. Right. But um, as long as you understand that you're, you were here tonight to present your proposal, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a couple of weeks to mull it over, come up with our questions. And then we're asking you to come back in two weeks to, uh, for a yay or a nay, because we would just be advising the town, in, town leaders to put this on the town warrant at the annual town meet, at the, special town meeting. Correct? Yes, understood. Thank so you. So that, um, you, know, uh, you know, I can think of a number of questions to ask and I don't think this is the right time to ask them yet because I haven't, I haven't filled them out yet. 
you know, I, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. You know, the, the first thing is, for example, the housing authority hasn't filed any applications in years for money. And so it's not like the money wasn't available. We just didn't have any place to spend it. So who would be in charge of overseeing that the money is spent correctly? Are you saying the board of selectmen and excuse my English, the bill, but the planning board also is gonna well, oversee? So the history of it is that the <clears throat> planning board volunteered unanimously to be the first board uh, along with a represent two representatives from the select board at, at the time, because we have been studying the affordable housing trust fund and affordable housing issues for years. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not cast in stone that the planning board will be five members of the seven member affordable housing trust fund. It just worked out that way because we wanted to get started with out having to reinvent the wheel. Uh, but the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is an independent legal body within the town. Its funds are uh, subject to audit by the uh, uh, town accountant and the uh, auditors. And the statutory structure says that whatever we might hold from CPA funds has to be kept even separate within our other funding. You know, it can only be used for community housing purposes and we have to report back to you annually on what's become of that money. So uh, there, there are a number of safeguards built into the system. Um, the idea is that um, as Molly said, affordable housing, you know, the whole housing structure becomes very, uh, very complex. And uh, we don't have any particular plans. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment. Uh, we're just gathering information, growing the, uh, growing the account so that at some point in the future, we'll be in a position to do something. Um, but, we're approaching it from a point of view of people who are working with the definitions of affordable housing. Um, what can we do with it? What are, what's more important? I, you know, as a practical matter, no one's talking about going out, buying a, a quarter acre parcel and putting up a Habitat for Humanity house. Uh, we've been told that the um, trying to tackle affordable housing one, uh, one unit at a time is pretty much a fool's errand. Uh, so we're trying to look at more strategic ways to, uh, to leverage the money. Uh, just by way of example, what uh, some communities have done is that uh, they have, when approached with a proposal for an affordable housing development, they have used CPA money to point the applicant towards a direction or towards a site that they would prefer to have developed rather than one that they would prefer not to have developed, which could involve, for example, paying to extend sewer lines in order to host a, an affordable housing development on a particular parcel of land that wouldn't currently suit it. And it's just one of the ideas. Uh, but again, uh, it, that's the kind of concept thinking that, um, you know, frankly, you, you guys haven't done it. You're, the one foray you've made into the community preservation money, into the affordable housing money is to, um, um, fund the affordable, uh, the rental subsidy. And, and that's fine. And I realize no one's asked you for it um, because it's not quite the same as asking to rehab uh, headstones. It's, uh, it's a much more amorphous concept. And 
we're at an early stage. Um, so we don't have particular projects, but we are develop, we're building us the we're building the infrastructure so that as we get further along and start to see opportunities, we'll be in a position to act. And that's that's the long and short of it. Right. I have a question. Um, sure, go ahead, Mary. Every year, 10%, uh, estimated 10% gets set aside into the housing um, set aside. Do you, if this were to pass, do you see then every year asking for however much got put into the set aside? Yes, Mary, uh, but you know, and at any point in time, I and mean, we, we could stop as well. But I think, you know, initially we're asking for the current amount, but the idea would be to continue to build that affordable housing trust pool. But that would be an ongoing conversation in my mind. And Bill, do you have a different thought or? Uh, a similar thought. I don't think it's necessarily something that would, would have to be asked every year. Uh, it may be something that we would do every, oh, say every five years. Mm -hmm with a look back discussion over what we have done in the past five years. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, well, uh, the only other question that I got right now, and then we'll move on because they, we have a lot of other people in line asking for money, is that where does, where does the money come from for Chad Howard's windows for Golden Court? Does it come out of the housing trust fund? Does it come out of the general fund? Does it come out of the historic set aside or what? I'm not familiar with that application. Who who has he asked? Nobody yet. He's up for an ask later on. So do we go to you folks and say, hey, this guy wants, I'm just using, mm -hmm. Chad, no disrespect intended, but I'm just using you as, a, as an example. Um, what uh, do what do we do? Do we just uh, say, okay, town meeting, you can do it, and then the money is available, or do they have do they have to go to you guys to get the money to fix the windows at, in Golden Court? So you're going to have to talk to uh, you're going to have to talk to whoever is the uh, the guy Stewart. in Boston. Stewart. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm not even going to. Um, I, I was flipping briefly through some of the terms and um, definitions. Um, uh, all I can say is that it sounds like a project that could go multiple ways. Uh, but I do not happen to know offhand whether CPA rules allow spending affordable housing money for rehabilitation. Yeah, no, that was just a question that, that we had. Mark, you, you have your... Yeah, I, if I could ask one more question before we move on to the next item, if we're done with that question. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't know if this is best um, answered by Molly or if Bill also, um, but could you, or maybe I missed it. Could you name some of the communities that have already done this? And do you have an idea of how long they've been doing that? Or do you want to come back with that info? Yeah, I was just say that's info. Um, I don't have it at my fingertips, but we can certainly send it to you. And I think the Affordable Housing Trust has only been in, I don't believe the Affordable Housing Trust has been in existence as long as CPA funding. Bill, am I right on that? Um, the, let's see, the <laughs> enabling act for the affordable housing, uh, let me see if I can get a date of origin for it. I love having lawyers on these calls. Molly, has any of that 25,000 been spent for the rental assistance? 
Um, we had one application, Mary, I'm trying to remember when we reached out. Um, I want to say about six weeks ago. And that application failed to make it through the process for whatever reason. Um, so again, unless they vet somebody and approve it and present it to us, you know, we don't really know why. They just said, well, it, it didn't go through. Um, and they were concerned at the time about the moratorium um, being lifted with evictions. So they thought that might um, prompt some further activity. But it, as of two weeks ago, I think was the last time we poked at it, there was no further activity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh Unless any other members of the committee have any other questions, we thank you for your submission and we will duly uh, study it and we will be back to you in two weeks to find out if we, this is gonna go to town meeting for the intended purpose or what. Sounds good. Okay, thank you very much, Jen, uh, Molly and Bill, thank you. Okay, thanks for your time. You're welcome, thank you. Alan, you're up. Uh, simply because his piece of paper was on top of my pile. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so tonight uh, I have two asks for the committee, and this is on behalf of the library, not the cemeteries. Um, so the first one is, <clears throat> and I did send around the write-ups. I don't know if everyone's had a chance to look at it, or do I need to... Go over it in detail, perhaps not. No, you don't not. need to go over it in detail, but it would okay. help to just summarize things. Yep. Okay, so the first one is involves the John Gnatic Old Hadley mural, which was donated to the library uh, last month, and which is now hanging in the library. I hope uh, if anyone has a chance to go see it, it's just really striking and gorgeous. And we had a nice little ceremony and it was on YouTube. Uh, it's on the Hadley Media site now. But in any case, this this uh, mural, which is four feet by 11 feet, so it's quite a large piece of art, <clears throat> was done in 1956 by John Gnatic. And I think most people know who he is. He's a graduate of Hopkins Academy. He's been painting for 60 years. Many, many places, businesses and homes have his paintings um, on display. And uh, this one was done for the 300th uh, uh, anniversary of the town and for the 350th uh, a po souvenir postcard the, the mural was was photographed and it was used as a souvenir postcard so it's been the picture has been kicking around in the form of a small postcard now we have the the original which is quite large hanging nicely in the library and it is in unfortunately it's in need of uh, some restoration work um and uh, we had a professional um from Michelson's take a look at it. And uh, he also did an appraisal for the donate for the donation, but he in, he also did a um, uh, an estimate of the restoration work that would be needed. Uh, and basically uh, there's two things. One is the frame is slightly warped at the top from the way it was hung uh, previously. And uh, that's caused some distress to the, um, <clears throat> to the oil uh, and which could get could get worse. And the other thing is it needs to be cleaned. Uh, it badly needs to be cleaned uh, and re and varnished. It was never varnished and it needs to be and has a protect it needs a protective coat of varnish. So anyway, the um, the person from Michelson uh, gave us an estimate of what the cost would be and it's I think it's sixty two hundred dollars. yeah, six six thousand two hundred dollars and that's what we're asking for to do. Um, uh, under the historic uh, criteria um, to restore uh, this unique piece of art, which it, which represents Hadley history and itself is part of Hadley history. Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's that. Do you want to discuss that one first or should I go to the other one as well, the other ask? No, go, go, go with the other one too. Okay, so the other one is, um, as we all know, the library has uh, lots of documents, old books. We have a local history room now. Uh, the town itself has 
old records. The the Hadley Historical Society has tons of photographs and other things. None of this, very little of this is digitized. Um, and uh, it's difficult to preserve something and make it accessible at the same time. Because when you want to preserve something, you, uh, I mean, for uh, you, you lock it away. But uh, part, part of uh, um, that means you're going to lose the accessibility um, aspect of it. So what many other towns and historical societies and um, other um, municipal agencies have done uh, and libraries particularly, they have, they have been able to, with the use of modern scanning techniques and equipment is to scan a lot of the, their collections and their documents and their photographs. So it's more accessible for people and it allows the, the materials to be preserved by not handling, handling them quite as much or having them out there. Um, so uh, this, is, this is a request for $2,500 to purchase uh, several pieces of equipment that would allow the library to offer this service to well, basically the public, but also to the historical society in the town, as well as to do its own digitizing of, uh, of its own collection. And that, I guess that's, I'll stop there. Okay, uh, now, according to your application, you're asking for 100% of the budget from the CPA. The library doesn't have any extra money to kick in? We, we, for, for the, we don't for the restoration work um, because that's just not something that's in a, any kind of budget line that, that we have. Uh, the, we could possibly fund some of the scanning equipment out of our furnishing budget for the new library, but that is we're pretty much close to the line on that. Uh, uh, so we prefer not to, um, unless we absolutely have to, because we're not sure what else we, we're going to have to do to finish furnishing the library um, with, uh, with other stuff. Um, <clears throat> and in, in the past, unless there's some outside money um, for like a state grant or something like that, you folks have typically allowed 100% of funding from town departments um, because it's all basically the same money uh, comes out of the same pockets, which is the taxpayer. Um, so uh, you've been very generous in allowing 100% of the fund of funding for most projects, unless there's a fund somewhere that we can tap. Uh, in this case, we, there is none. Uh, I'm an outside outside money uh, for either one of these projects. Okay, uh, does anybody else on the committee have questions? Mark, you got a question. Yeah, Alan, I'm sorry, I can't pull up stuff until I get that software issue on my computer done. Uh, did you let us know what the size of the, what the maximum size documents? Is it an oversized scanner or just like up to a certain size? Do you know yeah, that? So it's up, yeah, it's not, it's not the, we couldn't do the maps for instance, <laughs> if that's what you're thinking, yeah. Uh, we are, but we have those. We have those scanned already. So, okay. it, but but it is for a larger than a photograph. I think the Epson scanner is. Uh, I think it's like, um, uh, it's like it could do an old deed, for instance. Okay, um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen this equipment yet. This is fairly new. I've seen older uh, examples of it at the Jones Library, and the, their flatbed scanner. They can do glass negatives, which is really neat. Uh, those are big. Those are like eight by tens. And so this would probably could do documents that are, uh, you know, maybe eight, 18 or 20 inches by, by 30, perhaps. Okay. Uh, so, but a lot of the documents that we have aren't that big. Yeah, I have a, I have another question that I just, uh, Mark pointed it out to me and I appreciated you thinking about it, but um, is there going to be any training involved with using this equipment and is that something that's in 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 the uh, in the twenty five hundred dollars ask, or is that uh, no? That that's it's just for the equipment. Push buttons. There, the, um, I mean, the library staff will have to get trained on using it, just like they have to get trained on using the Xerox machine, which is actually a the copying machine, which is actually more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I still can't figure out how to, how to use this copying machine in town hall. But um, no, so there's no training involved in this. Uh, we would need to train people. There's this software that I, 
don't, I, I'm not sure. No, this does not include software so that we may have to get go out and get some software somewhere. A lot of that is easily uh, obtained, however. And um, so, no, this is just straight equipment. So no training involved? Nope. Okay. Edwin, I have a comment too. And Go ahead. Um, I've been involved with the mural and getting it, helping to get it. Alan's done a lot of the lifting here, but helping to get it to the library. And I just want to say, if you think of it, the whole package, the, the painting and the restoration, the painting's been appraised at about $15,000 or so. So mm -hmm. the, the, it's not really, in some respects, it's not 100% of the um, funds if you look at the whole, the whole thing of getting it to the library. Um, but yeah, both, will... both requests are for $8,700. But um, does anybody else have from the committee have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, whoops, wait a minute. Let me, Tim, I just want to make sure we don't have any questions from you, anyone on the committee. Sure. Uh, okay, go ahead, Teresa. Uh, <laughs> uh, apologize, we're having very serious um, problems with our internet for some odd reason. It just started wanting to update, so I couldn't get onto my computer. So okay. I have used my voice at the last minute. But uh, I just wanted to say to Alan, actually the town, uh, at the town hall, we do have a very sophisticated scanner that, that was purchased through a grant actually with some of the planning board money yeah. that, um, that you should look into. I haven't used it. I don't <laughs> know uh, uh, what, it, uh, I, I know that the capabilities are great because it, uh, it was purchased with the idea of scanning all the building department. Right. Um, 650,000 pages that we yeah. have. But it's from all sizes, so uh, it might, and it's pretty simple to use. Apparently, I did not use it, uh, but uh, might be something to look at. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I did. I was aware that the planning board did have their own scanner, and I was not about to step on their turf. It's in the town hall now. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we could use we could use it for the bigger one, bigger things that we, you know. We, um, I don't think we have too many big plans that we would need that are historic it in nature. Takes small but, plans too, so it yeah. takes all sizes because yeah. um, half of the documentation in the building department is eight and a half by eleven sheets. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I think that's that's a good point. Um, one thing about the scanning equipment in the library is it'll be a lot more accessible to people. You know, during it's open, we can supervise it. You know, we have people who can can do that for people. Uh, you know, and won't have to ask somebody in town hall to stand stand next to us while we're doing it or show us how to do it or whatever, or send people over to town hall. You guys are busy enough. Okay, does anybody else on the committee have any other questions? Okay, Alan, thank you very much. We appreciate your presentation and hey. we'll take it under consideration and we'll go from there. Okay, you let me know when the next meeting is so I can show up tonight. for that. All right, again, appreciate all your, your kind uh, assistance in the past on, on all these projects. Good. Yep. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, Tim, you're next. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to bring, I have two, um, applications that I'm bringing forward for the town. Um, one is funding for some new picnic tables at the uh, pavilion that's in back of the uh, elementary school. Uh, when we first started the project a number of years ago, we, we anticipated having enough money. Unfortunately, with everything that's happened in our lives, and uh, we were delayed at the last portion of this. And unfortunately, we also had to use the uh, in-house uh, electrician for the town under the contract. And we could not use, uh, do that uh, with um, volunteer help, which turned out to be a significant amount of money, unfortunately, which um, uh, was unfortunate. That, that took away a lot of money that we had anticipated for uh, putting the pic uh, buying picnic tables for the pavilion. 
the other, uh, so we, we have $3,800 sitting in the coffers right now for picnic tables. Unfortunately, because of COVID and everything, um, like with everything, the prices have gone up dramatically and also shipping has gone through the roof. So our thought was to go in front of you guys and see if you were willing to give us some more money to get some picnic tables in there. I put it under general only because we don't have park and rec uh, as a viable um, department right now. Hopefully we will very shortly, but that's why it's under general. But the thought was to buy all the picnic tables that we were thinking that would be needed and could be used and get high-end commercial ones that are metal with the, um, the thermoplastic covering that's a 10-year guarantee, a uh, warranty on it. So uh, the money that, that uh, is on the application is to, uh, we went out and got estimates from four different companies. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, one of the ones that we have picked because of the um, availability of the picnic tables. That was another problem that we found. We can't, oh, we can't even get them in a lot of places. So uh, that's, that's what we're asking for. Um, we're requesting a little over $2,500. Uh, the amount that is needed to purchase all the uh, picnic tables, which would be six of them. We're thinking about uh, three rectangular ones and three round ones for the pavilion. And it would come out to about 40% of the total budget. I'm sorry, Tim, that was what, six and what, six and five rounds, six, what was uh, the number? No, we're doing three rectangular ones. These, three these rectangular. would be similar to what we have. Uh, looking three at. rectangular, okay. Rectangular ones, um, they're, um, this one's listing them at um, $670. And then some um, oops, round ones uh, like this. I think you said six of the round ones, okay. No, three and three. Oh, three and three, three. okay. Oh, and six three. total, okay. Uh, six total. I, okay. I apologize if I... No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to type and follow. So three rectangular ones at six foot long. And I'm, I'm sorry, three rectangular ones at six foot long and three uh, round ones. And they're about a uh, four foot diameter, I believe. Yeah, 46 inch round table. And the reason we thought of getting them all at once is because of the trucking costs. It's, it's, it's insane how, how much trucking uh, uh, the fees have gone up. But, uh, and it didn't cost much more to get all six versus two that we mm -hmm. should probably get. So oh, I that's why we're coming in front of you guys. So hope there's that um, you'd be in favor of that and, and it'd be can be utilized the way we all thought of it and would be used. Yep. Okay. Does anybody from the other from the committee have any more questions for uh, Teresa? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I just um, wonder why Tim said there's not a viable park and rec department because I'm <laughs> sitting on this committee was, park and rec. I'm sorry. I didn't. I. You, I'm not involved in everything right now. I apologize. Um, I, I'll come and talk to you then. And we can get it under um, Park and Rec if you so desire. Yeah, because we have three commissioners. So we're, and we do have um, someone who's accepted an offer. We're just waiting for them to start. Uh -huh. OK, uh, what about your other ask, Tim? Trying to bring it up and it's not cooperating with me on this. Uh, the other one is a little bit more complicated and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of history. It is for um, the restoration of the columns at the town hall. As you're aware, um, we came in front of you a number, a couple years ago asking for money to restore the columns. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the weather got behind us and we could not start when we wanted to. When 
And then we found out that when it went out to bid, unfortunately, um, the, the bid specs were incomplete. Uh, for whatever reason, they went out without any of the information regarding the restoration. It was only about painting. So we were surprised at how well the, the pricing came in that for the entire project, but then realizing it was only for painting the, um, the columns. So uh, what we, we went to town council to ask, what can we do about this? Because it is actually was a town error for what happened. And uh, they said, unfortunately, because it's a signed contract, we have to uh, award the painting pro um, contract to the lowest bidder. And because and we we informed the painter of our dilemma and why should we paint columns that are not restored? Because that's really what we want done. Uh, so he's willing to hold off. And what we'd like to do is get the specs out and get a bid uh, on getting the columns restored, and then we can paint them. There's a figure there of 45.5 in front of you. We are pretty confident that's going to be a lot less than that, but uh, we, we don't know precisely ex uh, what the price will be to re restore them. And quite honestly, uh, it's good, it would be tough to come up with an accurate estimate at this point anyway, because of the complexity of trying to restore the columns right now. Uh, those are structural, and the way they're put together is little splines all the way from top to bottom. Uh, if you go and look at them, there has been some uh, repair work that actually is not the best that was done. Uh, the, the water is penetrating into those columns, and we're just looking forward to getting something done with the town hall at this point. But we need to restore those columns before they get so bad that uh, we'd have to replace them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does anybody from the, uh, Mary, you have a question. I'm just looking back in, at the annual town meeting in 2018, there was $35,000 put towards the town hall pillars. So that was what you're saying was just for painting. Well, no, the $45,000 price tag when we went in front of the town meeting was to restore and paint. But the, the problem the, is that when it actually went out to bid, the only thing that was in the bid package was painting, nothing on restoration. So, but my question is that $35,000 that's already been awarded, how does that fit into the total cost? The, right now, uh, we have we have awarded a uh, to a contractor twenty five some odd thousand dollars just to paint the columns. So then there's ten thousand left over from what you've already been awarded. Well, we can work out those figures. If if there's ten thousand more, uh, we can reduce that price. Because it's you've got thirty four thousand nine hundred sixty eight, so thirty something dollars was spent out of the thirty five thousand, um, and that's been extended till next town meeting twenty twenty two. So, um, so there is ten. If it's twenty five thousand for the painting, there is ten thousand left in what you've already been awarded. Yes, and then we were surprised that the bids came in so low. And then we find out that it didn't right. include the restoration. So yes, uh, if, if, yeah, we can certainly work with you on reducing that uh, uh, when we get closer to town meeting and your, your final approval, we'll certainly work on that, that estimate a little bit more. I just needed to get something into you because uh, we did it the last, actually the, the, the day that they were uh, due is when we found out uh, that we had to get everything in. 
And, is sixty thousand uh, enough for your total project? I'm sorry. Is sixty thousand enough it for your very total? Could very well be. Uh, you know, you're talking about prevailing wage, and it's it's insane what we're seeing for pricing. Yeah. So we will work on that figure for you, and most okay. likely we can reduce that. So, Tim, would it be fair to say that you're not entirely comfortable saying, yes, we have 10,000 excess, so we'll decrease this. You kind of, for now, you're maybe more comfortable leaving that as a contingency that you could give back after the bids come in. Uh, yes, well, right now, let's leave that those figures fluid. I, we do not have the final consensus on the estimate back from the architect. Okay. And that's a, another problem that we're faced with is we've run out of money for our on-call architect. So everything that he's doing right now is free because we have no money to even talk to the guy. Wow. Another problem that we're going to be faced with is trying to get money to go ahead with any projects in the town because we don't have funding for it. And it was it was uh, removed from the last town two meetings. Well, we meet again in two weeks, Tim. So if you if you I, have I'll a do my own, I'll, I'll <laughs> better <that>. sense. <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody else have any other questions for Tim from the committee? All right, Tim. Thank you very much. We appreciate your ask, and we'll take it under consideration. Thank you for your time and Diane, I apologize. I'm out of the loop. I love your background. I wish we were there right now, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm out of loop, so I didn't know. Uh, the last time I talked to somebody was when we really didn't have anybody to go to, but thank you. I, I will reach out to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I do not have a copy of Chad Howard's ask for the windows at Golden Court. I've read it on my phone. I've looked at it. I just do not have a physical copy of it. So you're on, Chad. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, your time tonight. I, uh, I'm Chad Howard. I'm meeting most of you here for the first time. Um, and not an ideal way to meet, but uh, nice to see all your faces. Um, I'm new to the uh, Hadley Housing Authority. I've been with housing, Hadley Housing Authority for about a year and a half now, um, but I have worked with the Amherst Housing Authority and the Belchtown Housing Authority, uh, and we are all under uh, one management agreement currently, those three housing authorities. So um, I'm coming tonight to uh, uh, seek a, uh, a CPA grant. Uh, $75,000 is what we're asking for. Um, it's, we have a uh, small uh, construction project at the site uh, for preservation of the uh, building envelope, a uh, replacement of windows. Um, there's 131 windows at the Golden Court uh, elderly housing development, um, total of 40 apartment units, 131 windows, which are original to the building and they are, um, uh, quite old and, and um, causing a lot of problems. And um, we're, uh, we, we, we're, we're looking to ask the CPA to contribute to our project. Our total, total budget for the project is approximately $185,000 estimated. Um, we, used a, uh, we, we use it with the development of uh, uh, Department of um, Housing uh, for the state of Massachusetts has a, uh, a construction uh, costing estimating uh, software, which takes into account um, all of the inventory that exists at the at the particular housing development that's that's in question, and it, it factors in prevailing wage um, and construction materials to, uh, totaling everything, and uh, it's it's proved to be fairly accurate. So we we do feel currently that the the hundred eighty five thousand dollar would um, would be a good number for this project and. We have uh, we're we're supplementing uh, really the 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 CPA fund would be a supplement to our um, our state capital funding that we have. It's 
uh, very limited. We have in total, uh, Hadley Housing Authority has uh, 45 rental units, affordable rental units. Um, 40 of them are uh, for the elderly complex, Golden Court, and the other, the remaining balance is uh, family housing at Burke Way, which neighbors the Golden Court property. And our, our capital funding that's allotted for for that uh, for those that number of units is is so small that it's very hard to um, be able to perform simple simple uh, projects that you know we, we we really need in order to preserve the the developments you know the integrity of the developments to allow it to to continue to be a place for you know people to be housed um, so but we have we have. Uh, Set aside some reserves from our capital funds over the last several years. We've we've been we've we've known that this is a project that we need to get done. We simply just don't have the funds to do it in completion, and um, so we've been setting aside some of those capital funds for the past several years. And we have approximately one hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars set aside for this project, uh, which um, uh, is about sixty percent of the total budget. And we were hoping that the, the CPA might uh, be interested in partnering with us to um, to undertake this project, uh, total grant uh, request of $75,000 to to um, balance out that, 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 that total budget. I'm just taking notes. Could you just go back over the, how many uh, units in Golden Court and how many at Burke Way? Uh, uh, 40 to, uh, 40 units at golden and, um, uh, 14, I believe. Okay. 14, 14 at Berkeley. Okay. So you're, what, what you're asking the CPA to, um, uh, what you're asking us for is 75,000. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Again, I apologize. I know I've seen your request and I've, I saw it on my phone. I just don't have it in front yes, of sir. me right this minute. I just don't. Sure. You'd be, sure. You would be amazed at the amount of trees that got killed for this one meeting. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, no problem at all. Completely understood. Okay. Now, does anybody else from the committee have any questions for Mr. Howard concerning the windows on Golden Court? Uh, are you going to do the windows and the doors or just the windows? Uh, this this proposal is just for the windows. We'd is love anyone... to do the, the doors. The, uh, you know, we, it's a little. We're we're trying to supplement. We're trying to find a a, a fund to supplement our our capital funds that we have reserved. Um, and the doors just aren't. We we need to do the doors next, but uh, we're not there yet. We just don't have the funds. Can you do just the windows? Absolutely. Without the doors. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, you. Does anybody else have any other questions for Mr. Howard? Well, I have a question for the CPA committee. Do we know if this is an appropriate use of the CPA funds? Again, um, I think it is, depending on if how it's asked for. If it's asked for rehabilitation or renovation, it's okay to use. Again, in two weeks, we will have a more specific answer because we are going to have to contact uh, Mr. Saginaw in Boston to find out for sure. But um, I think it is an okay request. Again, I'm qualifying my answer with, I think. So I'm just not sure. Go ahead, Mark. Chad, do you know when Golden Court was built? Uh, 1962. 62, all right. Well, that would put it over 50 years old, which I think Mass Historical is their threshold for, for historical properties. So yeah, that, I that would be in your favor. Right. Sure. And I, I, I was looking at it as uh, purely uh, a community uh, housing application um, but um, thank you mark yeah um, okay
Okay, does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Howard? Anyone from the committee, I might add. Okay, uh, Chad, thank you very much for your time and consideration. And I, I will do my darndest to have a copy of your request in front of me in two weeks. But uh, right. I just don't have it right this moment. I apologize for it. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time, everybody. Okay, you're Thanks, welcome. Sir. Now, are there any other asks for money? that I am not aware of or whatever. No, good. So we can go on with our meeting because I have a, um, I'm finding out that we are doing things kind of bass backwards and not really, but then again, maybe we are, but um, we need written documentation from various committees about representative to CPA status. I know we got one from Amy. So Park and Rec, we need a letter from uh, saying that you are the representative from Park and Rec. Mark okay. Dunn, we need uh, one from the planning board that says you are the representative from the planning board. Uh, Denise is historical, right? I, I did submit that, but do I need a new one or can I just resubmit what we did before? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I did do that when I took Carolyn Holstein's spot. Okay, but that may have been last year or may have been before the election. So I think just to cover our butts, let's just make sure that, that we have those on record, please. That's all I'm asking. Um, did I miss anybody? Um, no, I do have the draft of a letter to the Conservation Commission and saying that I myself am an at-large member to the CPA. I happen to be on the CONCOM. Now, due to the select board's decision not to reappoint Paulette, who was the representative from the CONCOM to the CPA, uh, we are gonna meet tomorrow. Um, and I would, I'm gonna submit a document that says that I would like to be considered for the CONCOM's representative to the Hadley CPA committee, if that's okay with you folks. If there is someone else on the CONCOM that wants this position, I don't have a problem with it. Now, uh, well, how do you guys feel about it? So no comment, that's good. And so we are going to have to have, I'm gonna have to resign my at-large position and we're gonna have to have the Board of Selectmen appoint someone for the at-large for the remainder of my term on the CPA. Are you guys okay with that? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, during the summer, I've been in contact with Mary and Amy and we've decided on uh, the way we have meetings now on an app, on an on-call basis is kind of hokey. And we've kicked around the ideas quite a bit and we've come up with a plan of September 1st is the closing date for articles. The second, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy and Mary. <laughs> the second Monday would be the first meeting, which is which would be today. And then two weeks from today, we would have the final meeting. The reason for that is a uh, number of years ago, we had a CPA meeting and we appropriated almost $300,000 on a 20 minute discussion. And I myself thought that was a pretty, not a wise thing to do. So that's why we have two meetings to 
If someone ha can come up with questions, that's fine. And we are gonna, um, that's for the special town meeting. For the annual town meeting, the Board of Selectmen in its infinite wisdom wants the uh, warrant closed sometime in the beginning of February. So we've asked for placeholders in the past and we've always gotten them, but it seems kind of like a ridiculous way to run a business. So again, we were thinking that the drop dead date for requests would be January 1st. And we would have our first meeting two weeks after that. Uh, wait a minute. Did I do that right, Mary? What? Well, the problem is Martin Luther King right. um, holiday. So probably the Monday after Martin Luther King Day, because right. that can vary. This year coming up, it's the 17th. So it would be the um, third Monday. So, um, so if we do it the Monday after Martin Luther King Day, then we can figure out each year what that is. Right. Okay, yeah, that's, I just wasn't sure of the dates. I don't have a calendar in front of me, so I don't know. So that was, uh, and for planning purposes for our individual people on the committee, um, I think that it, to have a specific date is a good idea. I myself think it's kind of, uh, I don't, I don't know the right words for it to say, oh, we're going to have a meeting next week. Well, let's go get it. Let's go get one. You know, that seems kind of silly, but all, all the other committees in towns have set days, the second Tuesday of the month, the third Tuesday of the month, whatever. So that's why I was going to come up with um, an official meeting date calendar, if that's okay with you guys. Is, is that okay? Good, thank you. Now, um, we have to vote on officers. We haven't voted since the town election. Now, if there is someone who wants my position, I am not gonna argue. And simply because Amy Feiden has been doing an awful lot of work and so has Mary Thayer. They have been doing an awful lot of work on my behalf. I'm having a heck of a time running my business here on the farm. And I, without the crutches of these two people, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now. So how do you guys feel about a vote on the officers of the CPA? We got to have that. Do we want a change? Is it, are you happy with the way things are going? Do you want someone else in, our, in my seat? That's okay. <laughs> um, what do you guys, what's your feeling? Amy, what do you think? I, I would be happy to not I, I, I mean, I don't mind helping you out, Edwin, as a co-chair, but I would be happy not to be the chair um, at all, only because I'm on four committees for the town. So it's just, it's too many. So um, if I could step back, that would be great. But if, we, if we're desperate or someone really needs the help, I, I, I will do it, but I prefer not to. Okay, good. Mary, what do you think? You had asked me about being chair a year ago, and I said, you know, I think I'm too new, and I still feel new in a lot of regards, but I would be willing to step up if, um, if the committee would like me to. I don't, I don't have a problem. Um, Diane, what do you think? I'm looking at my screen. That's the way you are set up on my screen. So uh, you're still muted. I'm muted? Now we oh, hear you. No, you're not. Okay. Um, I, I think that the ladies and you are doing a wonderful job in your roles. And I, I mean, Mary, you seem so on top of everything mm -hmm. with your organized Excel sheets and everything with that. I mean, I know there's a lot of <laughs> stuff behind the scenes that, you know, Amy and Edwin are definitely doing, but I don't think you're, you're too new to step up, but you, you know, your feelings and your confidence levels best, obviously. 
Mm. Well, I Mark, certainly know who to ask questions to. So, <laughs> yeah. Mark, what do you think? Um, I'm with Amy that <clears throat> I'm on um, the planning board. This I'm on. Um, I can hardly contribute to the diversity committee, and now um, I'm going to be on the uh, disability commission. So um, I'm happy to be a part of the wallpaper, and uh, I think that Mary is very capable. And uh, with the guidance when she has questions, I think she would uh, succeed exceedingly. Mm -hmm. Denise, what do you think? I will echo Diane and Mark. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, that's a, Cassandra, what do you think? I think I'm too new to step up. So Mary is, would be perfect. She's done an excellent job on everything. And I'd be happy to try and fill her shoes as someone who supports the chair and, and does some extra work. Um, I certainly don't think I know enough to be the chair. And I think Mary is far more capable than I at this point, but I would be happy to um, be a resource or a runner or, or whatever I can help with. Right. According to the CPA law, we need a person from the conservation commission. We need a person from the historical commission. We need a person from the planning board. We need a person from the board of park commissioners. And we need a person from the housing authority. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have four more because uh, it says that we can must consist of five to nine members. So we have three at large members of which I am one but I am 67 years old and it's time to get some younger blood in this uh, committee thing. And my commission is gonna be up in another year and a half and I'm looking to step down. So if Mary, if you want the job, you can have it. <laughs> because I feel that without you two, without Mary and without Amy being there where, where they are, I don't look so good. So I don't, you know, I, if, if you feel that you want to do it, I have more power to you. Okay. I won't be upset. Well, if anyone wants to get up and talk at town meeting, you're more than welcome to. But <laughs> uh, I will support the CPA with my heart. And I feel that the, it is a, a committee that would, should have been in town a lot longer than it has been. And the, for the simple reason that why, why do we need the CPA committee when there are so many things that need to be done in town anyway? So I don't know where the money is going for in town. So I, I don't mind standing up and speaking, but again, I just don't have the time and to give the job it's due, it's dues. I'd be willing to do it. And I, as long as I have people to like Mary and Amy to lean on, yes. But as of right now, um, Mary, if you want the job, it's yours. Should I make a motion? Yes, you please make a motion. I would make a motion that, uh, should we do any other position? Well, I guess for right now we'll do chair, right? So um, that I would move that Mary Thayer become the chair of the, the community preservation committee good do we have a second i second okay good we have a motion by mark and a second by amy any other discussion <laughs> it, it, any is there any discussion on this all those in favor signify by raising their hand aye okay all opposed and any abstentions? Do you abstain, Mary? No, she no. voted positively. Uh, does she have to abstain? Whatever. Yeah. Now, do we want to have co-chairs or vice chairs? Or a vice chair? What do we want to do? 
I, I don't think she needs a co-chair. She, uh, if, I mean, a vice chair would be fine if you really needed it or just uh, a treasurer and a secretary probably. Okay. Do we have any, uh, well, Mary is our treasurer. So is there a motion to reelect Mary Thayer as treasurer to the CPA committee? I would move that uh, Cassandra, if she's interested, be the treasurer with tutelage from Mary. Do you, do you want it, Cassandra? Um, I would do that. I would, I would need some help, but I would be happy to step up to that. I'm, this is my only committee. <laughs> uh, are, well, you, are you familiar I, with Excel? Oh, yeah. I have a master's okay. in business administration, and I took a lot of accounting classes, but it's been a little while. <laughs> it's, it's really, you know, probably three or four hours worth of fussing with stuff we get from the town accountant twice a year. So it's not a, it's not a huge thing, but it, what they, the sheets they send me just are so convoluted that that's why I came <laughs> up with this spreadsheet to try to just in one place, see what, what there is. So I can certainly show you how to do that. Yeah. Reports to ask for. And even when, if you want to send me um, what they sent you and I can look at what you made from it and then I can deduce uh, sort of what you did. And then I'd be happy to meet with you. And the Sometime. town accountant, Linda Sanderson, has been wonderful. I mean, when I ask her for something, it's there in a day, and she answers all my questions and gets me any other information. So that part's been been wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'd be happy to do that. I think that's much more fair than you being the chair and the treasurer. Yeah, no, that would be great. <laughs> okay, do we have any... Um... I'll make a motion to make Cassandra the new treasurer. Okay, and I would second, second it. Uh, is, uh, we have second. a motion by Amy and a second by Mark. Um, is there any other comments? Am I um, supposed to abstain from voting? That's my only question. Yeah, you don't have to. Okay. Okay. All those in favor signify by raising their hand. Well, sorry, <laughs> Cassandra. Okay. Okay. All those opposed? Hey, you did raise your hand. Good for you. Um, well, congratulations. We have a new chair, uh, treasurer. So, um, Edwin, Mark. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Amy, I'm not sure with your other committees, but with our park and rec committee, we've had a lot of voting we've had to do lately. And our select board member told us that for everything we vote for, we need to state our name and oh, we need our to position. Do roll call. Yeah, and I and I hate to be a stickler on it, but I know we're voting on important things. And what do you think, Amy? I mean, it's being recorded, so that's why I was like, well, I know they made I, us do it. I will You're tell you that on the planning board, what we've been doing is, if it's unanimous, we don't do roll call. But if it's going to okay. be a split decision, then we do a roll call, and okay. that's that's what Bill Dwyer, who's an attorney, has been. Okay, I'll go with Bill. Yeah, yeah. we were just, you know. <laughs> We were all unanimous right. with all of our Supposed stuff to too, but they told us we needed yeah. to say it. So I don't know, but that I'm fine with that. Well, you know what? The way I, I look at it, if somebody wants to come over and shoot me, they can shoot me. <laughs> Amy, I didn't mean I'm to cut gonna, you off. I'm not gonna uh, take anybody's names down or anything, but we have secretary. Mark, <laughs> Mark do you want to be the secretary? I'll, I'll do it for another year unless someone wants to. I, I'd, I'd gladly give it away. Um, Good. I, but if, if, if there's no other desire, I'll, I'll carry it another year. Good. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate it. Um, Amy, go ahead. Do your thing. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank, thank you for doing that for another, another round. And, and I did, uh, with Diane, that was a good point when you had said that um, it was something that the, all of a sudden the select board started doing. Um, I did, I did see, I went to um, the one of the meetings in um, 
from Massachusetts listening to the municipal things. And that's when they started saying it with these Zooms. But we don't do it on everything. And it hasn't seemed to be, we, we do what the planning board does for finance right now. So it's kind of awkward. It's different with the select board, especially because they have uh, Jennifer, which makes things a little bit easier and to move along. But um, Yeah, and I do have, I did make up a chart and everything to, to shows how everybody voted, except it's in the office that's 200 feet away and I'm not gonna walk out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you guys want me to, but I think that uh, if we use a, the purview of it's going to be a unanimous decision, we're covered. So um, I'll nominate Mark Dunn to be our uh, the, uh, secretary. Secretary. And I'll second. Or clerk, whatever you want to call me. Yeah, clerk, whatever. Scribe. Okay, that, that, was, that was my nomination. Do we have a second? Okay, Amy seconded. Okay. Um, well, okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of Mark being our clerk, signify by saying aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Yeah. That's what I should say. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh. We get newsletter. This is one of the reasons why I don't think that I'm a good in, in a good position to fill the job of chairperson. Because we have been getting newsletters from Boston about upcoming events concerning the CPA. Now, what they are asking is, is it OK for email addresses to be submitted to the people in Boston so everyone on the committee can get their own updates. Um, how, do you, how do you people feel about that? Do you have a, is that okay? I think that's fine for me at least. I know I get lots of emails and then it's sort of nice because I can get to it on my time and review it without needing you or Mary now to disperse it or share the information right how do you feel uh denise i feel great i think i actually already get those emails so okay good mark how do you feel i was wondering if there's been any discussion about doing what we had on the planning board we have a an email address that's planning at hadley dot dot org and that is an email that Bill answers as the secretary, and then he distributes things to that. So everyone, you know, he kind of filters what we have to get instead of all that. Um, I mean, I don't I'm not know sure. if you have that. To yeah. be brutally honest with you, um, I don't know if we want somebody, you know, vetting our mail. Well, honest. I mean, it it would be managed by one of us if if the town you know so that e either the chair or the you know my thought was that way it would make us more accessible to the townspeople if they wanted to reach our committee they would know send it to cpa at hadley meo i, I don't know if jennifer and the select board would give us an, an email address but I, right I now i think we all operate off of our own personal um, and as we come and go, you know, if I wanted to reach out to the CPA committee in two years and I'm not on it, I might not know who to, instead of, you know, just a thought. Yeah. The, the town oh, website oh, does have. That right now, I think that's a very, very, very good idea and that we should study it and do more about it. I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be dumb about it and just say, I don't know anything about it, but. Diane, what do you feel? You're still muted. I'm fine with them uh, sending stuff to my email. Okay, cool. You're are you okay, Amy? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm good with them sending stuff to my email. Um, the we did have a special CPA email um, that would go out. And, and that was Andy Kopaki was taking care of that. He was kind of monitoring that email. 
um, and since he's no longer on it. The other thing is, I, you know, it was for me um, to do that email, it was hard because I can't, well, I'm at work, I can't do my Gmail or, or other emails, I can do my work email. So that's why for me, I do prefer my regular just work email, like, cause I can get it during the day and answer it right away. Um, so that's the email that I like, but I don't, I agree with what Mark's saying because what I had to do was there was a problem at first with like the application and the application, people didn't know where to send it because they were trying to send it to that old email, but no one was getting it. So then mm -hmm. they had to temporarily change it to mine um, just so they had somewhere to send the application. Andy, um, and so we need to have something more general. And so um, for those applications, the other thing is on, on the application, it had Andy Morse Friedman's name and we had to have his name come off um, because people are looking to talk to him um, right. for the application. So it needs to be like, like the, maybe a little bit like the planning board, a little more general. It wasn't, it just wasn't something I was able to do at the time, but it's, it's a good idea. Okay, Mary, that's your first thing that you got to do. <laughs> the town website does have the contact emails for Amy and Edwin as, um, as chair, and then it lists the other people on the committee without we, I've been getting Stuart's because um, I had had to contact them last year. So they got my email and he's sent out seven so far this year. Um, and they're very informative. There's, you know, they explain what's going on with the CPA fund from a state point of view. They have a whole listing now by town of every project that they've ever done and how much the money was. And, um, and I, that's one thing I added to this fall. It, every year they each town has to put in their new project. So I went online and did that. And it's, it's interesting. They have a um, September 28th, they have a CPA boot camp, ideally for new members of CPA committee, but I did sign up for it. That's free. It's an hour long at lunch. And um, so that's something, you know, I could certainly send around to everybody um, the last couple emails so you could see what, what it was. Um, but I think, you know, this is, this is, we paid them $1,800 a year to, to do what they're doing. So it's nice to get some benefit from it. Um, besides just saying, is this an okay use of CPA funds? Um, yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Thank you. I saw, I saw it on my phone, which is supposed to transfer to my computer that there is this boot camp. Now, sometimes the phone and the computer don't talk to each other. So I did get it, but then I didn't have a, uh, a piece of paper that says I got it. So yes, Mark. I would just add one more comment. Um, and as a asset or a plus, a pro of having a collective um, CPA email address that if that was a clearinghouse that came into, you know, and whoever managed it each year so that those things came in there and then you send it out. Um, I personally have five different email addresses and, and they all have different filters on them and uh, something like that sounds very valuable and it could get filtered out as spam because I have so much email. But if I saw, you know, if you guys are whitelisted and it's coming from you, then I, I think I would see it and not not lose it. So that I'll just add that point. I'll work on that. Okay, good. Um, does anybody have anything else for tonight's meeting? We have a whole bunch of things. Um, Amy, when is a good time to get together at, at your work? so that we can see if we're going to uh, send some questions to Stuart. Obviously, I have a bunch of questions, but I don't know if asking the participants or that are uh, submitting the money is the right way to go about doing it. So do uh, we do we send Stuart a copy of each application and ask him to take a I look? I don't know. I honestly do not know. 
I, I think that's what Andy, I, I haven't done it. I, I haven't been in any communication with Stuart. Um, Andy Morris Friedman did it before. Um, yep. I believe he's just submitted every application and then he would get feedback from Stuart. And that's yeah. that sounds good. I mean, we're, we're again, we pay him to help us figure out, make sure it's something that falls under the CPA you know, law and everything. Right. No, I'd be I glad to send them. Oh, right. well, thank you. Thank you, Mary. That would yeah, be yeah. great, I think. Thank you. Um, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, does anybody have anything else? I, I do. Um, yeah. I passed around um, just because I got it from um, human resources over at the uh, town hall. They were trying to get everybody once a year to sign off on those uh, conflict of interest. Oh, ones. since I was on the committees, I said, I'll pass them to all the ones I'm on. And uh, if you want to. I do have uh, my, I, I signed it. Great. I will drop it off at the bank or maybe I'll have number. No, I'm not going to have number one son do it because he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Or you, yeah, or you can just email or whatever, or just tell me and I'll put your name on it. It doesn't really say a signature, so whatever you want. Okay. Amy, do you know if if we do it for one committee, then we're set, or do we have to do it for every committee? I was just going to list. I, I, I don't know, Mark. I <laughs> yeah. don't know that. Either. So I thought it's kind of silly to have to do it for all the committees. So I figured I should be good, but I don't know that answer. And, and I just heard in my previous Zoom on the diversity co committee, uh, with news to me, perhaps you all know, but um, I just heard that our HR director resigned. That is so correct. I, so I think we're going to have, um, I don't know her name, that filled in as an interim before. I believe she's, she's covering temporarily again. So I guess I will reach out to her and ask yes. if well, we need to do one for each committee. She's not done well. No. No. So I believe she's full. She's not part. She's part time. She's Deb, part time. Deb Bradway. I think it's Radway or something like that. Okay. And she's not part. So she's just part time, fifteen hours a week. Okay. Um, but she will be the new HR person. I'm not sure if her email will be the same as as Ed's was. Okay. You know? Okay. I guess one, one thing I can do in my chair duties is to draft the warrant articles before our next meeting too. If, if, you know, if we were to approve these, we can also say this is the wording. Right. And what I used to do is I plagiarized the year before's warrant article. And yeah. I just put in a different money amount and I just put in a different name and everything and I used the same exact wording as the other previous years. Now, sometimes the lawyer found fault with what he read from year to year. Sometimes he didn't. Um, good luck. I don't well, know. That's hard. Well, that's I a good thought, starting point. I, I had sent over some sample wording in one of the things I sent. I can quick share the screen. Um, Hopefully I'm sharing the right screen. Are you seeing one that says ATM yeah. or STM? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is, these are two that I like that were used in the past to see if the town will vote to transfer whatever amount from the Community Preservation Act, yeah. the open space or recreation or historic or general um, to that whatever department for the purpose said expenditures to be conducted within two years of the date of town meeting approval or unspent funds will automatically be returned to the appropriate CPA, I'm sorry, appropriate Community Preservation Act fund by that date, and then the votes. Yeah. That seemed to be sure. a good way. And then we don't have to extend any deadlines. Um, no, but you know, sometimes the lawyer is going to say that's perfect, sometimes he's not. We'll find and out. It all depends what side of the bed he wakes up on that morning. So Which, I've seen it. I've gone two or three years and I've just plagiarized the previous year's 
motion and there were no problems. All of a sudden, bang, there's a big problem. So your guess is as good as mine. It, it's, it's well, that's been used in the past. So hopefully that, that if people like that wording, yep. that will pass. Yep. Okay. Um, just looking over my notes. So we are going to get documentation from the previous uh, from the various committees about representative to the CPA status because next time we meet in two weeks we're going to have to vote on whether or not we're going to let the uh, these asks go to town meeting. So we should have something on file somewhere somehow some way from the various committees. Um, the CONCOM, which I will get, the historical, the planning board, and the park commissioners, and the housing authorities. Those must be on the CPA committee. I don't know why, but that's what, they, that's what the state law says. But, uh, I, I did get one from Amy, so we're all set there. And I, if anybody else has anything to say or do, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. One quick question, sorry. Amy, is the next meeting already posted? In two weeks? Uh, I, I, I gave it to Jennifer. I don't know if she submitted it to Jennifer. I, I don't do that part. All I do is tell her that I want it. So I did tell her the date and the time. It is so it's in the works. The 27th. Right. She yeah. will, she sets up the, um, the Zoom. She does the whole thing and then she'll post it with Jessica. And then who contacts the, um, all the applicants? Do I do that now? Oh or? yeah, I, I did that. I, I, as soon as Jennifer sent me the coordinates, then I sent it to everyone and then I individually sent it to each applicant. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, does anybody have anything else to add to our discussion? I make Hearing none, I'll sure. take a motion to adjourn. Motion by Amy, Amy. I will second. Mark seconds, all those in favor signify by saying aye. I, okay, thank you all very, very much. I truly appreciate it. Thank you.